render great praise to someone. We will magnify the lowest part as if to say, you are so lofty, you are so worthy of praise that your feet are higher than me. Your feet are better than me. I look up and I see your feet. So the text says, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. What makes these feet so beautiful? They're hanging off the bottom of a man who preached the good news. That's why they're beautiful. They are gospel carrying feet. That makes them lovely. In this life, you will thank teachers who taught you good lessons when you were young. You will shake the hand of a doctor who diagnoses and treats a disease. You might even hug the neck of a doctor who delivers your firstborn child. But in eternity, you will love the feet of those who diagnosed your miserable disease of sin, preached to you the unsearchable riches of Christ, and delivered your soul from hell. You will say, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. And we have to go back, lest we become puffed up. And begin to think our feet are something special. We begin to have people walk behind us and carry our shoes for us. Because our feet are just so precious. So we back up a little. Verse 15, again, how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet. You see the connection. How are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet. He quotes here from Isaiah 52. It's in direct connection, or we could say the beauty of the feet is in direct connection to the sentness of the preacher. Or we could say, if we wanted to be specific, the sender. It's, it all goes back to the sender. In the same way that the necessity of the preacher is not found in the man, the beauty of his feet does not belong to the fact that they're just feet. It's not in you alone. Why is that? Because the gospel preacher is not a free agent. You're one who is sent. You're one who is sent. You, men, brothers, preachers, you are on the errand of another. If you are to preach the gospel, and again, this relieves a little bit of the pressure, uh, kind of, puts more pressure in other places. But if you are to preach the gospel, you don't do so on your own. You don't go on your own. You don't go in your own strength. You don't just decide, I'm going to go preach. Some of you, are that's, that's where you are. You just decided. I'm going to be a preacher. That don't work. That ain't going to work. God sends preachers. He calls preachers through his church. If you're going to preach the gospel, you don't go on your own. You don't go in your own strength. You don't go in your own power. You don't carry your own commission. You don't preach your own message. As we've heard, so much we've heard has been about preparation and study. Why would I do that if it was my message? The reason we have to study is because the message is not ours. We've got to get the message right. As our Lord says in Matthew 24, 45. Who then is the faithful and wise servant? That's you. Faithful, wise, servant. Whom his master has set over his household to give them their food at the proper time. You are just a servant. You're just a steward of your master's things. Your feet are beautiful because of the message that you bring. And the message that you bring is good news because it is a message of salvation and of peace with God through Jesus Christ. And the, the only reason you can preach that authoritatively is because the master has sent you to preach it. It's not you. It's not broad shoulders. It's not deep voices. It's not low brows. The authority comes because you've been sent. And at the same time, 
Our Lord says in Matthew 10, 40, whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me receives him who sent me. Christ so associates himself with his preachers that when somebody receives you in the name of the Lord Jesus, he says it's like they're receiving him. There is a connection there between those who are sent and the sender. Men, you are necessary servants. Beautiful stewards. The question is, how will they hear without a preacher? The answer is they won't. They will not hear without a preacher. That's the beauty and the necessity of a gospel preacher. Necessary and beautiful only because of the economy in which God has chosen to work. He's chosen to use us to serve Him. It is in our weakness and our inability that His strength is made perfect. We have a treasure, but it's stored in earthen vessels, clay pots, throwaway pots. We are men of unclean lips who have been chosen to declare the mysteries of Christ Jesus. And so the gospel preacher is one whose role is indispensable in the divine strategy. And yet every day we echo with the apostle who is sufficient for these things. It's not us. Only Christ is sufficient. Christ's ministers are necessary because we just preach his all sufficiency. This is our job. With our mouths, we're just pointing to the all sufficient Savior. So as you leave, as you go out, you see people come in contact with people you know. Ask yourself in your mind, how will that person hear without a preacher? How will that person hear without a preacher? How will that person walking there ever know of the all sufficiency of Christ unless I tell him? The answer is they won't. They will not hear without a preacher. Ask that question and then preach. Let's pray. Father, help us to preach. Lord Jesus, we ask that you would give us power to preach. Send your spirit with us. We ask that you would continue to raise up laborers to go out into the harvest. As we look around us, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Oh Lord, I pray that in years to come, this room would be packed out with men called by healthy biblical local churches ready to learn how to preach, to be sent to preach, to go and preach. Oh Lord, raise up preachers. Oh God, make me a preacher. Make me a preacher. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.